I'm talking to um, Andy Greenberg. He is the author of the book which was published a few years ago in Bulgaria, also translated to Bulgarian. The book is titled WikiLeaks, The Machine That Kills Secrets. So I think he is the one, one of the most uh, you know, suitable persons to discuss the topic of arrest of Julian Assange, which happened a few days ago. Um, Andy, I would like to talk to you basically about two main points. First one is Julian Assange, his indictment in the context, arrest and indictment, of course, in the context of um, where are the boundaries between the freedom of press and responsibility not to compromise, for example, national security. And the second topic which I would like to cover with you is about uh, journalistic, journalistic standards. So let's start with the first question. I will be, you know... I will ask it frank, uh, frankly. Is Assange a hero or he is a traitor and alleged criminal? <laughs> no, I, I, I have never thought that it was my um, role or even uh, something I am capable of answering. You know, I, I, um, I don't. I'm not the arbiter of treason in America. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and, and in fact. Um, the, to call Assange a traitor, you know, it, it would be strange because he's not an American. Uh, most of the high-profile leaks that have gotten him in trouble have been about America. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he has betrayed his countrymen or something. He is a, a, a foreign, something like a journalist, often, very often a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that 99% of what he does is the activity of a highly adversarial, combative, highly controversial journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and I do think, to be clear, that a lot of it has had really important journalistic effects. Okay. Um, you know, starting with his most famous leak in 2010, which was not his first, but it was the one that really put him on the map, mm -hmm. uh, Collateral Murder, this video of an Apache, U.S. Apache helicopter firing okay. on civilians and journalists in Iraq mm -hmm. and killing, I think, 18 people. It's, it's been a while since I checked that story, but I, um, you know, that was a, a war crime. It was covered up. It had been unreported for years. And uh, he, with the help of Chelsea Manning, uncovered that and exposed it. That was probably the, the, the high point, I would say, of his, honestly, of uh, maybe of his entire journalistic career. But even in the, the, the sort of mega leaks that followed, like uh, hundreds and thousands uh, of, of millions of documents, uh, mm -hmm. From the Defense Department and the and the Depart Department of State in the U.S., he also exposed lots of serious wrongdoing. Um, you know, unreported civilian deaths. He helped uh, with the exposure of the U.S. stance on Tunisia to to uh, show the Tunisian people that they were were free to revolt against Ben Ali, the dictator there. You know, there were really important things in those documents. There's no question that what Assange has leaked has had journalistic value. Um, you know, I, I don't think that the question of, of whether he is a hero or a traitor maybe is, the, is answerable, okay. or, <laughs> or that I should answer anyway. Okay. But then The question, uh, question that I'm hearing most, most now, if you don't mind me proposing it essentially, is that is, is Assange uh, a journalist or not a journalist, some sort of criminal, some sort of hacker, somebody who can be... Um, indicted for his activities rather than a journalist because actually that was that yeah. was my uh, next question actually uh, yeah. is the indictment an attack on the free press would you agree to this I think it's kind of uh, if it it's a kind of sideways very clever attack on the free press you know I would say by um, you know in the US there there's a long tradition of allowing journalists to publish whatever that the, they receive. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. As long as they act as journalists and sort of passively receive it, they, um, journalists frequently um, receive classified information for which their sources have violated a clearance to get it to them. They often ask the source for more information. And, and I would say that they do collaborate with the source in many ways to think about what they would like the source to leak them. Um, okay, but um, in all those, like for example, the most common cases, you know, 
New York versus uh, United States, you know, regarding the uh, Vietnam War, you know, uh, dossier. Uh, yeah, freedom of press. My, my point is, my, my question actually is, is um, there are a lot of accusations against Julian Assange that uh, he just, you know, published all the papers without considering the security, personal security of the persons who are actively involved on the field, like, for example, in Iraq or elsewhere in the yeah, Arab world. Yeah. How do you comment yeah. this one? I, I think that you could argue he's a bad journalist, that he's a, he's a sloppy, reckless journalist. Okay. Um, and, and I, you know, um, I'm not really here to defend his decisions to not redact a lot of uh, mm -hmm. what he's posted. And um, I think even in... in uh, more recent leaks, like he leaked the, uh, not only when he leaked the Democratic National Committee information, he leaked um, donors' pay payment information as well, things that almost no other journalist in the world, I would say, would ever have exposed, mm -hmm. chosen to expose. Um, when he was, when he first started leaking the Afghan war logs back in 2010 also, like, uh, there were clearly things that he should not have exposed, and it, the State Department cables um, ultimately as an accident it was an accident that they were that they were fully leaked, um, a kind of operational security slip up. But the result was nonetheless that lots of uh, State Department sources and people who, who worked with the U.S. State Department had to be um, protected or moved out of their countries. I mean, those these are serious mistakes at best. And mm -hmm. you can call them mm -hmm. worse than mistakes. In other cases, bad decisions. Um, but they don't necessarily make Assange not a journalist. The one thing in his entire career that um, I, I do think the Department of Justice may have uh, successfully latched on to, to show that he's not, he has not always acted as a journalist, merely as a journalist, is that he once in 2010 offered to help Chelsea Manning to mm -hmm. crack a, a hashed password. Yeah, that was, that was my next question. Uh, how serious is that, you know, out of so many possible reasons to indict him, uh, it seems that uh, the U.S. authorities they have chosen the the most uh, the most non-related to freedom of press one, namely hacking the computer to extract information. So, what's your comment on that? that that's exactly right. I mean, they've they've chosen the one thing that they know of, at least, or that we know of, we, that we know that they know of in his, you know. 12 year career running WikiLeaks, where he does seem to have put his toe across this line between a journalist and a hacker. I don't know of any other journalists uh, who not only ask sources to get them information, but then also help them to um, evade or even break the security of the system. Let's, yeah, let's, 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 uh, let's be honest, uh, to help them to acquire that information by breaking the law, correct? Um, I suppose, yeah, yeah, technically breaking the law if he did what he's accused of. Yeah, of course. Which is, which is that, you know, he, and I think that that's a big question, actually. So um, the indictment states that, just to like lay it all out, that, that Manning uh, says, I would like to uh, essentially crack my administrator's password to impersonate the administrator as I continue to get you more stuff. Um, and he sends, she sends, rather, I'm sorry, Assange a hashed password, like an encrypted password, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Assange says, uh, and then she says, uh, do you have any experience cracking these? Mm -hmm. And he says, yes, and I'll, I'll try, basically. Then two days later, he, he says, uh, she, she checks again, she says, did you manage to crack that password? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he says, no luck so far. So, you know, that, that sounds... And the Department of Justice in the U.S. wants to make it sound like he he entered into an agreement to with 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 Manning to conspire to break the security of the mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. together. You know that he helped hack the system. Um, but I think some people have pointed out, and in fact, the, the Department of Justice just in a new affidavit yesterday yes. revealed they don't know if he ever cracked the password. Not only did he, we, we think he probably failed to crack it, mm -hmm. but also we don't know, and the Department of Justice has no evidence, they said in December of 2017, the date of this document, mm -hmm. that they don't know if he even really tried. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sanj lies about all kinds of things. There's no question about that. 
and he may have just lied to Manning. He may have, have said, "Oh yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll try. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll try mm -hmm. that." Password. Okay, let me let me go a little bit backwards. Uh, speaking about uh, treason and topics like that, uh, how would you comment all the information which is available online, widely avail available online, about his alleged you know, connections to, for example, Cambridge Analytica, uh, Brexit uh, leaders, uh, Deripaska, like famous Russian oligarch, and after all, the whole, uh, the whole claim of the US authorities that he acquired, WikiLeaks acquired uh, the, the mail of de the Democrats uh, uh, from the Russian intelligence service. So, oh, is yeah. it not stepping over the border of journalism and getting too much into politics, to say the least? Um, well, you know, that's, you look at Fox News in America and it, it has stepped over that same line entirely. Like, it, it is... Um, Sean Hannity has a phone call with the president of the U.S. every evening, uh, reportedly, where, you know, they just strategize together. So, you know, um, I, I would say that Sean Hannity is still a journalist, but he's one who has very, very clear biases, you know. I, and I think that, that I, I would never claim Assange is an objective journalist or an unbiased one. Mm -hmm. He seems to have, for instance, in the 2016 election, I, know, I, I want to be clear. I don't really, uh, first, that I, I don't really know, it, I have no evidence myself of Assange's connection to the Russian okay, government, okay. Which, I think, which I think a lot of people believe he has. Um, but, I, you know, you can, you can start to speculate about that. And I'm not sure I'd like to do it, but, um, but looking at his behavior, he has released very little, if anything, about the Russian government in recent years. There was one report by Del Cameron at, uh, uh, I think he worked for Gizmodo at the time, where he found that Assange had actually redacted documents that were damning about a Russian bank um, from the rest, from a leak with no explanation, mm -hmm. uh, which was strange. Assange had a show on Russia Today, um, you know, in 2011, which is a Russian state TV network. I know. I don't, I don't think that, <laughs> that I would do that. Um, he he clearly seems willing to um, to I don't know he he get if nothing else he has not made a priority of of targeting the Russian government and there may be more uh, he may he may be friendlier with some Russian authorities than okay. we know but we have no evidence of that and I okay. don't want to claim um, yeah I, I'm not forcing you to speculate speculate I'm just you know asking about your uh, you know, rapid, you know, opinion. I, I think that what we can see is that uh, Assange um, first was like very willing to take sides in the in the 2016 election. His his reluctance to criticize Donald Trump is bizarre. Um, he seems to have chosen and maintained his position that uh, that the most important thing was to expose everything he could about mm -hmm. the Democrats mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. uh, and in doing so, and in, in fact, the whole course of his his work, he's always been willing to accept documents from hackers, just as he's, just as much as insider whistleblower sources. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that when Russian intelligence agencies, um, under the guise of this Gutierrez two point figure, offered him all those leaks, he accepted them. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, I don't think that Assange knew. Or uh, could have, maybe he's suspected, but he couldn't have known. Okay. The people offering him that information were Russian GRU agents. Okay. Um, uh, let's let's go to a conclusion. Yeah. You know, I don't want to spend your time too much. Um, let's let's. I mean, could you please tell a few, say a few words about First Amendment in the context of where is the border between? Are there any limitations before the journalists? just, you know, to drop out any information they acquire or they should consider some subtle, subtle, you know, uh, points like, you know, security, national security, even treason. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the First Amendment, I don't think that there are any limitations like that. Um, if you, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are limitations about 
um, clear and present danger. Like, you know, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater in, in America. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, you, but uh, when it comes to deciding what to publish, I, uh, you know, I don't think that the First Amendment is the tool to use to control what people publish and what, if it's if it's safe enough, if it if uh, it's the right decision to publish. People have certainly questioned some of the thing, some of the decisions um, that of, of, of other things that have been published, like parts of the Snowden documents, for instance. And I don't doubt for an instant that the journalists who published that are journalists and that they made careful decisions. Um, they just happen to be ones that like some critics disagree with. So the I, I don't I don't think that the First Amendment includes it, nor should it include limitations on what journalists should be allowed to publish. Okay. Um, I, I think and I don't think that's what Assange is getting in trouble for here. You know, okay. he, they, they have cleverly found another way to attack him. <laughs> okay, I see. Activities. Um, and I and I hope I think that all journalists should hope that uh, they don't pile on new charges related to the nature mm -hmm. of okay. I see. Okay. And really last question. What did it happen from the time you wrote this book, you know, back in 2012, 2013, uh, up to nowadays, you know, is there any change or nothing changed? Wow, a lot changed. I mean, um, Assange, I think, has changed a lot. He, uh, at the time when I started writing that book, I think was a more level-headed, um, lesser known person, uh, less notorious less biased. Um, certainly, if he was biased, he had more of a left-wing bias. Now he seems to have a strangely right-wing bias. Um, but, you know, the I think that that book actually came out, uh, that the Bulgarian version. Yeah, that's the Bulgarian. Um, came out uh, in October of 2013 or so. Mm -hmm. And by that time, Snowden was on the scene. Um, and I think that <laughs> Snowden changed things at least as much as WikiLeaks, you know, and uh, the, um, I, I don't know, it's hard to compare, but um, I think only in the, I only managed to get into the afterword of that book that there was this new thing happening with Snowden. But the, um, Snowden changed, I think, the way that we think about surveillance globally, but also he proved part of the thesis of the book, I think, which is that um, there is a new world of leaks that is upon us and it, it, it has only continued since then. I mean, after Snowden, which is maybe the most top secret leak of all time, you know, we've ever seen, uh, then there was also the Panama Papers and then uh, a sequel to the Panama Papers a year later, which were in volume the biggest leaks we've ever seen mm -hmm. from an anonymous mm -hmm. source. So, uh, you know, I do think that that kind of thesis of the book that there's a new age of information transparency, involuntary transparency, that that information is gushing out of organizations in a way we've never seen before. You know, it, it's been borne out. Okay, thank you. I think we covered more or less all the points I had to ask you. So uh, thank you very much, Andy, and I wish you success and hope to see you soon. Thank you.